that communication has been one of the barriers in as far as the relationships are concerned. And you guys are a good symbol that really shows that if you are together in a relationship, share everything that you are doing, life can be a bit better. How do you find this as a handle? How do you go about it? <laughs> well, um, I used to struggle. Uh, my communication was terrible. Um, I didn't communicate at all. I'd only keep uh, my, my partner on the need to know. So I would just say with me a stolo and then that's it, right? She wait for me to come back. But um, as years went and, you know, um, I've learned to communicate a bit more openly and now I can add more details with tea. I'm going to the shop, this is what time I'm gonna come back and you know, that's, that's, yeah. Yeah, and I think for us, I think when you create a space to be open and vulnerable, it makes it easier, to, it makes it so much easier for you to be open and honest, to communicate. Sometimes we struggle to communicate because we're worried about how the next person will perceive or react. And so we've really just created a space for us to honor what we've said and respond um, and listen with understanding and not always to react. Yeah. A lot of people can say different stroke for different folks. That's true. And uh, I mean, the president has just declared this as a pandemic. A lot of people are going through that. The stresses that comes with COVID and a lot of people started knowing each other when COVID struck. So how do you help other people that you start having this conversation? I think first and foremost, it's, it's a matter of understanding each other. Um, when you have a common understanding, and that means spending time um, asking the questions that need to be asked and not skirting over issues, asking for clarity, um, that really helps you get to know one another and it helps you, you know, facilitate a dialogue and a conversation to both progress you um, and also to just edify to who both of you are as individuals. Yeah. True. It goes back to the communication thing that um, don't only communicate for the other person but communicate for yourself so you tell your partner how you would like to be communicated to. Because sometimes you say something and they receive it, you know, in another way and, you know, they take it somehow. So you just have to make sure you're always on the right page and communicate efficiently, effectively. We know that love was never taught. If love was a subject and a degree to obtain, what do you think would be the first subject? <laughs> mm. Sure. Listening. Um, yeah, listening. I think, I think a part of love comes with listening and being attentive to the needs of your significant other, your family, your friends. And I think um, in order to love, love comes a lot with listening. Um, and by listening, it's not just the hearing, but it's the feeling. It's the listening to how this person makes you feel and reacting and responding um, as organically as, as one would, yeah. Yeah, I would say trust. Um, you, know, you should trust your partner um, and you know trust has so many dynamics to it because um, there's levels to trust but um, once you, you understand your partner I think it becomes so much easier and you can love someone you trust because you can have love but if you don't trust them it makes the relationship a bit you know tricky so trust I would say is also a very key um, way to let's talk about qualities as in five qualities you came with your five qualities, he came with his five qualities. And when you do the calculation, you find that he has three of what you want, maybe you have two of what he wants, then you have to work on the others. What is that you have to work on for him to understand that we're in this together? I'm very impatient. <laughs> and I think uh, he's had to, and, and I think it's not, it's not even a matter of compromise, but when you're in a relationship with someone, uh, there is a part where you need to understand wheels of the bus to go round and round, um, you really need to pace um, and acknowledge the fact that um, I can't go ahead of you, uh, we have to do this together. And so that's, that's just been a big learning for me, that I can't rush ahead um, and I need to be able to wait with him and not for him. Yeah. So I just want to ask something, as a couple, mm -hmm. what would you say to other couples that are thinking GPV does not affect them directly? We are not abusive in our relationship. So if you would want them to be involved, what would you advise them to do? Um, yeah, look, I think um, I associate um, GBV with a mental state. So um, I always say that 
a car, uh, your, 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 your body is like a car, you know, there's an engine, there's a gearbox, so many components that run you and function you as a person. So I would say mental health is one of the things that we usually underlook and um, once you get that right, I think it um, helps you drive, you know, your, your, yourself and you, you, you'll function as you should. So you'll be more aware of, you know, certain things like, like, like GPV, you would know already, you know, when I do this, you know, this is not good, you know, so yeah. Okay, as my parting shot, yeah. do married couples still use condoms? Yes. Yes, they do. Yes, they okay. do. <laughs> um, and I'll respond to that. Uh, some women are not for contraceptives. Um, okay. The hormonal changes that happen in a woman, and I think a lot of men have come to support their partners mm. in that way. Uh, to yeah, use condoms. Um, it, it, it really just makes life so much easier and it's a two-way street, it's a two-way thing and so I think men should be encouraged um, to use protection. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, you must, you must trust. trust condoms. <laughs>